Yeah. You're so right. Right. We nice. just tried to record it without this intro. Yeah, it's just not the same. No, it's not. It's not now, the same. See, now I'm ready to podcast. Yeah, weird. Right? Yeah. <laughs> wow, you're fucking, you're so smart. <laughs> it's uh, like preparing for a scene almost. We're preparing for the podcast. It kind of gets you into a vibe, right? That little theme song. It it's does. Like, and remember when we were looking for them and we listened to that one, we were like, that's the one. Yeah, we knew right away. <laughs> yeah. We found that song in two seconds. Yeah. We found it. Like, we're like, yeah. And we both like, like looked at each other and we were like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we are both like stoned. We're like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. That's the sound. Um, how you doing? What's going on? Good. What's, what's new in your life? Um, had a good acting week. Your hair looks good. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. It was my it was my look. She told me to do a braid for Motherland. Ah. Oh. Uh, I had a, an audition yesterday for Motherland. I was a witch. I had to. It was a very action heavy audition. Mm-hmm. I haven't had one of those before. It's been more you know, acting and more the dialogue, but I had to make up some like witch incantations underneath my breath and then get up and pretend to be hit by these like different attacks. It was actually pretty fun. And wow. my reader was quite good. Like he gave me a lot to work with and I got a great job from Tiffany. So she said, great job. Great job. Nice work, Anna. Wow. Yeah. That'll, that'll give you a boner. And then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, and then I had an audition earlier for um, The Flash. I had to speak Spanish for it, uh-huh. which was pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking sweet, man. Yeah. Do you, feel like, do you feel like you're kind of like on, like kind of on a little movement right now? Yeah. I have an audition on Monday too, and I had one last week. So I feel like I'm, I, it's, I signed mid-April and I didn't have a ton um, from now until last week. I had a couple commercial auditions and a self tape and one of the commercial auditions I couldn't even go to because I was away. So it, you know, I was feeling a little stuck, (laughs) but it's nice once you start auditioning, you're like, okay, this is why I'm doing it. You know, I, I like auditioning. Do you? Dude, I fucking live for auditioning. Yeah. I fucking love it. It's a rush. I I hope I never make it as an actor and I just get to audition (laughs) all the time. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's a rush. It is a rush for sure. Cause you're, it's, you're under pressure. I, I don't know, man. I love doing stuff under pressure. Mm. You know what I mean? That's why I like watching movies. I kind of get my heart rate going. I'm like, oh my God, is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I love that stuff. Yeah. Um, that's sweet, man. So I feel like you're going to be a superstar in no time. <laughs> 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 well, I'm telling you, you got a good look though, right? It's, Thank you. Yeah. You got Thank the whole you. Spanish. Ethnically ambiguous. Yeah. yeah. Coming at you, love. And uh, yeah, I just came back from Deb's class. How's uh, that? How's acting class? It's going well. It's yeah. going really well. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm... Uh, you know, when you fe- I think you feel like this too. When you feel like you've progressed, it just feels really good. Dude, yes. Right? And everything in life too. You got a standing O <sighs> on Lo- Thursday. I love that stuff, man. It's awesome. Dude, when you, when, when you like, when you know you do a good job, I feel like in any aspect of like anything, whether it's acting or mm-hmm. whether, whatever it is, mm-hmm. there's no better feeling. Yeah. Right. Because you, when you put hard work into something and you get something out of that, fuck man, that's like, that's literally... I think that's the highest a human being can get without um, taking drugs. Yeah, I think it's important to take stock of those moments too because you could just... What do you mean stock? uh, What I mean is to stop and think like, yeah, I have progressed too. I feel like I have progressed, but to realize that it hasn't been by accident. You know, like we have put the work in and we get together and work on scenes and I pretty much everything that I read about or like listen to on YouTube has to do with acting. Yeah. So I think it does pay off if you put the work. So it's nice to be cognizant of that and not just think that it's like a fluke. You totally. Know? For sure, man. Yeah, totally. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, you do that much. I don't know. I can't watch that much stuff about acting and stuff. I, I do sometimes like I'll mix it up. I still listen to like Joe Rogan and Shout things, un- Rogan. Yeah, things unrelated to it for sure. But, yeah. um, I still, I still like to. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I would say it consumes at least 60, 70% mm-hmm. of my life, hundred percent. When I'm with non-actors, I, I feel a little weird. Oh, no, I feel, well, I feel a little conscious of not being annoying yeah. and only talking about that. Totally. I don't, don't you? Dude, I don't even bring it up. Yeah. Like scenes and stuff. I'm just like, there's no way they're going to know. Yeah. I had a buddy that I brought to an acting class and he was just auditing and stuff. And he was like, which class? <clears throat> Just on camera. Oh, okay. And uh, he was like, dude, I had no idea acting was like so hard and there was like levels to it. I thought like if you looked a certain way, this is how he sounds by the way. Mm -hmm. I just thought if you looked a certain way, you just kind of, you just get the part. 
like, wow, really? You thought that? <laughs> you know what I mean? There's, there's, there's a lot of people out there that like have no idea how difficult it really is. Yeah, it really is. I'm it can be now. real cringy. Out of everything I've ever done in my life, it is the hardest one that I've ever picked up. Like it's a hobby that's the hardest for yeah, sure. Yeah, because it's not just technically hard, but it's also extremely, it, you have to get over that initial like nerve wracking anxiety, right? Mm. Which so, makes you a better person. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Do you feel like you're more out- outgoing because of it? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I feel like I'm less self-conscious because of it. Because why would I be self-conscious in a regular setting when I'm putting myself out there and doing crazy shit 100%. in front of people yeah. all the time, you know? Totally. Like in Deb's class, that shit will humble you. Yeah. Deb, everyone for Deb listening, Podowski. is a uh, acting teacher that we, we go to. Yeah. We you fangirl. Gotta clarify. You got to clear. Yeah, we fangirl pretty hard over. Yeah. A lot of people do. Um, but uh, yeah, man, I just feel like, yeah, I guess just in situations where it's like, uh, I don't know, I, I, I'm not really, I've never been really a shy guy, to be honest. Like I'm pretty extroverted in mm-hmm. general, but I would say recently, yeah, just like, I think I'm just like more out there. <laughs> Which is, I don't know Uh-oh. if it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I Walking around naked in the streets now. I'm an introverted extrovert. You're an introverted extrovert? Like I'm kind of in between. I think you're an extroverted introvert. <laughs> what? Because I think you're pretty outgoing. No, I'm, okay, whatever the the order, but I think I'm both, you know? Like yeah. I am, but then sometimes I get burned out. Like I am very extroverted and I love people, but I can get burned out, you know? Yeah, of course. And I also do like having relationships with people. Like I like to have like a crew versus like, new all the time, you know, yeah. I can get kind of exhausting. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, no, I'm the same way. Like yeah. I, I love, I love people. I love hanging around people. I mean, we both have jobs that like require that too. Yeah. Like, you know, we're surrounded by people. It's just nice to every once in a while to just be able to go in your room and just close the door for sure. Yeah. Which I now have. Yeah. So pumped about it. Yeah. Talk moved <laughs> up in the world. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, yeah, I uh, finally got my own room. It's been about four years, five years since I've lived in Vancouver. Wow. And uh, dude, I'm telling you, it went from living with seven guys in a two-bedroom apartment. No, it went from living in a closet to living with seven guys in a two-bedroom <laughs> apartment, like a frat house with bunk beds, <laughs> to living in a room with just one other person um, to finally have my own room. And whew, dude, it feels like... I can't even explain to you what it feels like. I just feel like I'm like, I'm like, Oh, this is why people have their own room. Like mm. I feel so refreshed every Cause day. Cause you can recharge, right? I can recharge. Yeah. That's what it is. I can actually recharge my body. It's yeah. so nice. Yeah, totally. It's, I think it is important I, to have a door you can close and just be by yourself. Yeah. Or like sleep in. Yeah. Like that. I did that today. I slept. Could you not sleep in before? Well, no, no. Right. You know, yeah. and vice versa for the, for the other person. Yeah. Could you, could you, uh, you didn't get into a rhythm where you would tune the other person out when they would get up. It's, it's not, it's not that it's just like, you don't, you're, you're just like, res- you're just a respectable person. So you don't want to be loud getting up. You can't make your bed yet. You know, you mm-hmm. got to like, wait, you got to wait till the other person gets up. It's just weird. It sucks. Yeah. It's not fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, I don't know, like, <laughs> do you have more energy hanging out with girls and stuff? I mean, that, was, that yeah. obviously sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, do I have more energy? I definitely have more energy. I don't know what it is. I, I mean, I think it's the whole having your own room thing. I think it's just a combination of a lot of things. Yeah. I think the personal training business is really taking off. Yeah. Um, I think that I'm just, I don't know, man, I'm putting That's a awesome. lot of work into Good act. for you. Yeah, it's fucking sweet. What's going on with your business? Enough about me though. Um, <laughs> well, no, I'm just, I just feel like a lot of people are uh, wanting to train with me now and uh, it's, you still it's, have to train. You still good. have to train me, dude. Yeah. About that. <clears throat> <laughs> what's your rate <laughs> no i'll uh i'll definitely uh i'll definitely train you yeah you'll just come work out with me that's what yeah that's what i mean yeah. i just need you to teach me what to do so i don't injure myself because i herniated my disc or slipped my disc doing deadlifts oh yeah man deadlifts is a tricky fucking exercise yeah 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 especially when you're not very big <laughs> yeah yeah deadlifts is deadlifts like an exercise that like if you if you don't learn it properly right away, you can fuck yourself up for a long mm. time. Yeah. My back was fucked up for like a year. Yeah. I was actually getting into weightlifting and then that t- took me off. Dude, of if it. you got a little jacked, <laughs> you might look like a power ranger <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? You yeah. know, like Spanish girls are like kind of like jacked a little bit, <laughs> but they're like, you know what I mean? Like they like do like CrossFit, but they're, you know, mm. That's I don't you, know dude. if I could get jacked. 
That'd be you. You'd be Anna, like you'd be Anna Garcia. You'd flex when people say Garcia. <laughs> Anna Garcia. Anna Garcia, Tomb Raider. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could definitely get jacked. Really? Yeah, for sure. Everyone can, man. Everyone can get jacked. <laughs> you could definitely get jacked. <laughs> Especially because you're just like, you're a shorter person too. Mm-hmm. You blow up. <laughs> Ch- Chipotle a few times, a, a few times a day. Good to go, man. <laughs> Stick I have the a roots. body of a 12 year old boy. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say a 12 year old boy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a 17 year old girl. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Dude, when I tell people your age, I'm just like, people are like, what? There's no fucking way. <laughs> Keep telling me about that. <laughs> <laughs> Does it make you feel better when people talk about that? Yeah. Does it really? Well, because I started so late in the game, you know what I mean? So I want to have, if you didn't start that late in the game, dude, I was 28 really? when I started. Check this out. Check this out. Yeah. Bradley Cooper mm-hmm. was, I think he was at um, that universe, I don't know, whatever, Georgetown University or whatever he went to, to, to do acting. And he started when he was 25. Really? And he had to do school for four years before he was Damn. auditioning. So 25, 26, 27, 28. That, you know what I mean? Same thing, man. I think um, I also just like that I can play a wide range. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That I can age down and age up. I think that's within my favor because the more roles that I'm eligible for, the higher chance I'll have of booking something. Totally. Or or just auditioning more, right? So I like, that's why I like looking young because it gives me such a wide range, right? Yeah. That I can go for like college and high school and even like young mom kind of thing. Yeah. I don't think young mom yet, but for sure I could see the other ones. Yeah. yeah, young mom, no, no, yet, dude, no, dude. Yeah, actually, I was babysitting my kid's friend the other day, and I was walking around the West End, and they thought that he was babysitting you. No, they <laughs> thought that. Um, I think they thought that I was like some poor, like single young mom. Oh yeah. So they told there was this one old woman who came up to me, and she was like, "Bless your heart, dear." <laughs> That's ridiculous, really. <laughs> yeah. Bless your heart, dear. Yeah. That's funny. Can you imagine if you had kids right now? No. Like, what would your life be like if you did? Completely different. Do you think so? Yeah. Really? How would your life be if you had kids? If I had kids right now? Yeah, I guess it'd be different for sure. I'd still, be, I'd still be wanting to become an actor, though, for but sure. It would still be I'd be hustling towards it. Yeah, but you'd have... Yeah. It'd be so much harder. Wouldn't have my own room. No. I'd be sharing it with a fucking kid. <laughs> But you know what? I think uh, I keep hearing from a lot of people having a kid changes your life and you know, yeah, all it stuff, does. right? It makes you just a better person. So let's not shit on that. No, um, no. I just yeah. mean for where I am in life right yeah, now. Yeah, totally. I'm not saying not down the road, but for where I am in life right now, my life would be completely different. Yeah. Um, Can I ask you a personal question? Yeah. Do you support abortion? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So if you got pregnant right now, would you? I'd have to think about it, but yeah. I'd consider it yeah yeah (laughs) probably yeah (laughs) that makes sense yeah i'm uh i'm a labor and delivery nurse i did and we did like terminations and stuff in our hospital oh wow so you've seen it firsthand yeah crazy Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i've no obviously i have no say on that at all but Mm -hmm. yeah crazy i yeah i don't know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just up to the individual what they decide to do. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, it's just up to them. Yeah. That's how it is. Yeah. So what do you think of those like states that are like banning this and banning that? I think it's fucked up. It's I think pre- it's going backwards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's crazy, right? It's crazy. I'm glad we live in Canada. Mm-hmm, me too. <laughs> it's a sweet place, man. Yeah, it is. Especially the city. The city's fucking awesome. This fucking city's awesome, like, man. This view, I don't know, right? this view we're looking at right now. We're just <laughs> like, we take advantage of it quite a bit though. I yeah. do at least. I'm just like walking. You appreciate it a lot. Sometimes I'm just kind of in a funk and I'm kind of like my hat low and I'm like fucking move out of the way. You know what I mean? Like it's just yeah. like a bad attitude towards things. And yeah. like sometimes you gotta just like really just, I don't know, take off that hat and look up and be like, whoa, there's a lot of buildings here. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you and I maybe even have, um, a stronger appreciation for it being from Edmonton. We're like, yeah, guys, dude. do you not realize yeah, how fucking beautiful this it's is? It's crazy. Does anybody else realize how beautiful it is? Especially when it's like a sunny day. Hell yeah. Right? Like when it's a sunny day here, you're just Hell like, whoa. Yeah. Go rollerblading. Yeah. 
Fuck, that's awesome, man. I, want, I was actually just talking about going rollerblading earlier today. Dude, I want to get rollerblades. We should go rollerblading. I want to get rollerblades, tie my dog to my waist, and just go. And cool. let him take me wherever he wants to take me. That'd be fun. That would be sick, right? That'd be sick. I haven't rollerbladed, I think, since junior high. <laughs> oh, wow, really? Yeah, you? I mean, I think I rollerbladed like last year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's more, I've seen it more out here in <coughs> Vancouver than in Edmonton. I don't really think it's a thing in Edmonton. Well, because in Edmonton, it snows. <laughs> yeah. But even in the, in the summer, though, Edmonton is like a different place, right? Everybody comes out and it's like they're making up but for here's, the yeah. duration, like for how short the nice weather is. They're like, we need to get. Get it out of our system. Yeah, exactly. I know what you mean. But here's the thing. Here's my theory on that. Mosquitoes. The mosquitoes right. in Edmonton is is like literally, I think, just as bad as the wintertime. Yeah, that's so true. I remember going to like festivals outside and you can barely <sighs> even enjoy it because yeah, you can barely even enjoy it because you're just being like eaten alive. Right? So fucked, man. Yeah, that's I there's been a few times where friends have suggested like having a picnic or doing something outside. And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to get no way. I'm not going to get eaten alive. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This is amazing. It's, I know it's amazing. Here, I honestly I go outside. I'm like, wow, I don't have to worry about this at all. This yeah. is great. Yeah. But yeah, in Edmonton, it's it's very bad. Like I remember mm-hmm. playing. I remember playing basketball in like mid July, mm. and I would just come home covered, man. Me too. And I'm kind of allergic too, so mine would get like super. Oh yeah. Inflamed and big and. Yeah, yeah. and the spray itself, like mosquito spray, to put on your body is not good for you. No, it's not. It stinks. It's not good for your body. To yeah. Put those many chemicals on. Yeah, it's not good for you at all. So it's like no. you're you're shit out of luck. Yeah. So you're staying in wintertime and you're staying in summertime at the end of the day. Yeah. Bottom line. It was a good move for many reasons. <laughs> yeah, bottom line was a good move. Hopefully we didn't offend anyone. But sorry. Yeah, good move for sure. Um, yeah, for us. For other people, it makes sense. Yeah, if you like yeah, if you like staying in a cave, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> if you like shoveling driveways and staying in caves and I mean if you're really into cross country skiing and like want a big house and all of that, like it's the place. Yeah, if you like yeah, if you like if you want a big house to stay in all year round, that's awesome. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> dripping with judgment. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Well, we can we can say that because we're from there. I lived there. Yeah, my we whole can life, actually. Dude. I lived there my whole life. I yeah, don't care. we can say that. Um, I saw that you posted on your story about once upon a time in oh Hollywood. My God, oh, I can't dude. wait. Oh my When does it come God. out? When does it come out? It comes out in tw- 19 days, 18 days, oh I believe. My God. Yeah, I'm so fucking stoked for that movie. You know what? People, um, like some of the, re- I, I'm trying not to look at anything, but just, I just hey, can't have, we should go watch it together and then do a podcast. Definitely. hundred percent. That's exactly what we're going to do. Yeah. Like, right. And we're going to call we- it, we're going to call the episode once upon a time. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Pound I like it. it. I like it. Um, yeah, no, but, uh, I was going to say, I was like looking at some of the reviews on it uh-huh. and stuff and a lot of people were comparing it to Pulp Fiction, which I mean, dude, Pulp Fiction is like, fuck yeah. Classic of the classics. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I love the, I love that it's a period piece. Like I love films mm-hmm. that are set in the yeah. past. Mm-hmm. And you know, what's crazy too is, uh, I was, I was watching a Tarantino interview mm-hmm. and he says this like might be one of the last films that are able to like, cause they use actual Hollywood. Like they use a the Hollywood Boulevard and all mm-hmm. that stuff. And like, instead of using a green screen behind stuff, yeah. they use the real deal stuff. Yeah. And he's talking about how this is like the last film that he thinks that they're gonna be able to do this with. Wow. Cause it was so hard to get permits and all that stuff now moving, moving forward. Wow. I was like, Whoa, crazy. That's nuts. Yeah, dude. Wow. That's so cool. I can't mm-hmm. wait. Apparently he's only going to make ten films in total. Yeah. Did you hear I only heard that today. Yeah, that's 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 always been a thing for him. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. Do you know if he has them all mapped out or is that just I, I think, wonder why I ten? Know. Yeah, I wonder why ten too. I think he puts a lot of time and effort into yeah. uh, into his films. Like yeah. I think once upon a time took him like years and years to make. That would be really interesting. Or it's sort of an interesting way to approach your career to know that you only have ten and that you want the quality to be like incredibly high in each one. And once you have done 10, that's your career. I don't believe it though. I don't believe it either. Cause like the thing there's is, there's been so many people who have retired or so many actors and directors who have retired. And then I don't yeah. think you can just turn that part of yourself off. There's no way, man. It's, you know? it's, it's who you are as a person, yeah. especially Tarantino. If you actually listen to him talk and stuff, he's such a, he's such a movie buff and like a cinema guy that he, mm-hmm. he knows everything about films. Like he's like a film. I don't know what you call it, but like he just knows Everything about films. Aficionado. Yeah, aficionado. What do you? What is it? It means like a lover and a film. How do you say it? Aficionado. Aficion- aficionado. 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 
aficionado. Oh, shit. Aficionado. Okay. okay. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry to your ears. Aficionado. Aficionado. Okay, cool. Uh, and what does that mean? It means just a lover for film? No, it means a, a person who is very knowledgeable and enthusiastic about an activity, subject, or pastime. Oh, okay, cool. I'm going to start using that quite a bit. Aficionado. What are you doing? Aficionado. <laughs> is it aficionado? I guess. I thought, it was, I thought it was aficio, aficionado. Aficionado? Word of the day was a canono. Aficionado. That sounds like a fucking, it sounds like a, it sounds like somebody <laughs> get a Joey's only. Can get an aficionado with some fries on the side, please? <laughs> yeah, right. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm aficionado. Fucking right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, crazy. So um, how, how is it coming for you? Are you auditioning? Uh, I haven't had an audition in a couple of weeks. Um, just name of the game, but, um, it's cool. I'm fine with it. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you, what are you doing acting wise? How are you keeping sharp? <sighs> well, I'm taking classes quite a bit. Mm-hmm. I, have uh, you been doing that improv thing still? Uh-uh. No, uh-uh. I'm kind of done with improv. Why? I like it. It's cool. It gets me out of my comfort zone a little bit, but, um, I'm at a point in my life now where I just want to focus on the actual acting itself. I think like a next step for me would be taking like a scene study class or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I thought I want to do, um, our acting teacher, Deb scene study, but I just, I need to be in a place where I have, I want to make sure that I have a lot of time to devote to it because I want to do a good job. Yeah, man. Go hard or go home. Yeah. Seriously. So I'm, I'm waiting until I can. I can devote Hell yeah. a lot of time to it. What about you? Is that one you're wanting to do? Um, yeah, man. Like, like, like I said, right now I'm at a place where I'm progressing as an actor and I, I feel like that's honestly, it's kind of good enough for me right now. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm happy. I don't want to, this is my theory on acting. You want to know it? You put all your eggs in that basket. You're not going to go anywhere. Hmm. That's my theory on it. I'm mm-hmm. not saying don't train super hard. That's not mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. All I'm saying is if you are obsessed about making as an actor and you're obsessed about putting all your eggs in that basket and all mm-hmm. this stuff and you're just a server or whatever it is, fuck man, you want it so bad that I think you, in my, this is just coming from experience. You get a little bit, you get a little bit, um, uh, bitter about situations. You just get yeah. bitter as a person. I well, think. Like, ah, yeah, he booked that thing. Like, whatever. You know what I mean? What I've been told by people um, who are booking and I made it, they said that casting directors can smell desperation. Yeah, man. Yeah, you don't want that, dude. Yeah. You don't want that. Like, that's that's so, that's so, think about when a guy hits on you and he's so desperate to, like, get your number. Like, you're just like... Yeah. You lost, you lost before you even asked, dude. Yeah. If you go in there and you're like, I need this I, yeah. versus this is who I am. Yeah. You know? Like, I need this versus like, hey, it's my Saturday. I just thought I'd come in here and do my best and I'm going to go back to doing what I love. Yeah. Like, that's so much better, man. Yeah. You know? Totally. Yeah. And then I also think you need to be cognizant of the fact that they want to cast somebody who they want to work with, too. Yeah. And if you're a little obsessive and loopy. Yeah, man. I mean, I want to work with and you. And how many loopy people are, are there in this world? There's like so many, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was my thing last year. I got, I was really into, I was just, you know, I was training and just doing everything I could do to act and all that kind of fun stuff. And yeah. For me, man, it just, I don't know. It just, it, it wasn't, it wasn't making me happy putting all my eggs in that basket. Yeah. Well, I think you need to have joy in acting and that that's really important and you never want to get to a point where the joy is taken out of it. Right. Yeah. Because then you're not going to do, I don't think that your work is going to be as good. I remember I read this acting book. It's called the practical handbook for act for the actor, I think. And they said that, so they, in that book, they approach acting through actions, like breaking up down every every uh, line to an action, you know what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, so um, they were saying pick something that's fun, like pick something that you would actually want to, maybe that you haven't done in your daily life or you would want to do because then it's always more interesting for, it's always more interesting to watch an action that is fun, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. It makes a lot of sense. So I think having the joy and having the playfulness and fun in acting is really important. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, you, you know, we both know these people that are very, you know, they get a little bitter and Mm -hmm. you know, I've seen it so many times happen over and over again. It's just like, it's such a negative energy that I, I would rather not be a part of that at all than, than be a part of it even a little bit. Me too. And I, I still have that like new actor blood 
you know? Yeah. And I want to, uh, I don't, I, I see that and I don't want to, I, I don't want to move in that direction. No, dude. No. <laughs> I mean, and this is why you have a podcast too, right? Yeah. Kind of offset things. Yeah. And we can vent a little bit. Yeah, totally. Nice. Yeah. Totally. Mm-hmm. I'm glad we're, I'm glad we're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I, when I was actually like thinking about it a couple of days ago, I was like, fuck man. I actually look forward to doing this. Yeah, me too. I look forward to getting on the mic and just shooting the shit and putting it out there and fuck it. It's great. I love it. Yeah. You know, I think so too. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's nice that we're, I think maybe we were moving in the direction in the podcast a little bit of taking a little bit of the joy out, like putting a little bit more pressure Yeah, and, there it is. Yeah. And, Filming it. Yeah. And I think it's better to keep it fun. Yeah. Keep it fun, man. Mm-hmm. You can't make it one day. Fuck it. We'll do it the next day. Who cares? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, sure. we're still putting out episodes every week, so it's, it's these we're doing, we're doing all right. No, what, what I mean is putting just too much pressure on having like the structure and the current events and yeah. scouting guests and filming it and listening to it and cutting yeah. clips and all of that, you know, yeah, I'd rather put that time and effort into training as an actor. Yeah. That's the move. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Because even I think the podcast will be stronger because if we are training and growing as an actor, it's a fucking acting podcast, right? It's an act. So we'll have more yeah. shit to talk about if totally, we're working man. on acting, totally, right? Totally, yeah. Oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah. It, it, it's funny how, it, like, it is an acting podcast, but I feel like it's slowly turning into, like, something whatever. I don't know what it's turning into. Yeah. I think it's just two fucking it's cool. evolving. I think it's just two dope people, just two dope people, one dope show. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I know, it's sick, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like... Well, like Joe Rogan, he's a comedian and he's a UF, UFC guy too, but his podcast isn't either of those things. I mean, he touches on those things. Yeah. But we talk about acting and fitness and then just... Just life, life. man. Fake lips, fake tits. Let's go. <laughs> we'll talk about it. You know? Yeah. Somebody asked me if our lips were real this week again. Really? Yeah. Well, dude, they look great. <laughs> Thanks. They do. They look great. <laughs> Thanks. I got to ask you something. Do girls look at guys and go, oh, he has nice lips or no? Nah? Um, I do. So, so lips are a thing for, for, for guys too. I think for some girls, I think cause I have like really big, <laughs> really big lips. I like kissing guys who have bigger lips cause I've kissed guys with thin lips. You just don't feel it as much. What do you feel? Just thin lip. Like not a lot of lip. I like <laughs> I like how you, I like how it was a thin. It's thin, so it's just lip. It's not lips anymore. Yeah, just lip. Yeah, kiss guys with big lips and guys with thin lip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, yeah, um, that's crazy. I, I don't even I don't even know what a nice guy lip looks like. What? So what do guys? What do guys look? What do guys? If you target like a face, what do guys look for in a face? A face? Well, yeah. it depends on the guy for sure. Okay. Right, but me. Mm-hmm. I like, I like eyes, Mm -hmm. right? And not just the eye color itself, but I like, like the, like, like the bedroom eyes. Do you know what I'm talking about? Almond shaped eyes? Like, yeah, they're very seductive almost. Okay. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. they kind of like almost like, they just like look at you. Mm -hmm. I don't know. My mom, (laughs) my mom listens to this podcast. (laughs) Sorry, mom. <laughs> Bed your minds, man. Like they Aww. look at you and it's kind of like, it's like, you my know, my mom doesn't listen to this podcast. I know you're lucky. Mama Garcia doesn't listen to it. No, nope. so you can kind of go far with it. Yep. Whatever. <laughs> my mom knows me. I'm not hiding anything. I'm out there, dude. I'm out there. <laughs> How do you, what is your relationship like with your mom? Can you just be Zach or do you have to censor yourself? Um, What's it like? I mean, obviously I wouldn't like talk about doing mushrooms with my mom or anything like that, but like, <clears throat> I would say I'm very open with my mom for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cause there's no reason not to be life mm-hmm. is so short. Like there's no mm-hmm. reason not to be open about everything. Yeah. Like I'll tell her about breakups and new girlfriends or whatever it is. You know, I'll definitely talk to her about everything about acting. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Does she, she probably listens to a lot of my stuff and she's like, fuck sakes this again. Hey, all right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> does she, uh, try, give you a lot of advice or does yeah, she kind of sure. sit back and listen? A no? lot of advice. No, a lot of mm-hmm. advice. Yeah. She's super smart, man. That's awesome. Well, she's like an independent woman, right? Like she made the money in the house. Really? Like she's a boss ass bitch. That's awesome. Yeah. What does she do? Uh, she's like in, in insurance and stuff. I don't know, man, just something <laughs> high, high up in the world, you know? Good for her. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's good. She makes, she makes a good living and, um, it's something to strive for. It's nice to have that source of support, right? Like somebody to go to that you trust. 
Yeah, man, definitely. You need that in your life. Some kind of guru or you need some kind of leader in your life. Yeah, I my mom had me when she was so young. How old? Uh, she got pregnant with me when she was 17 and had me when she was 18. Dude, 18. I know. Fuck. Well, she had just turned 18. Wow. Yeah, her birthday is like a month or two before mine. Wow. Yeah. Are you hella close with her? Yeah, I'm close, but it's a different relationship. Uh-huh. I'm not going to, like, I will sometimes talk things out with her, but I'm not like, oh, my mom thinks that I should do. And I, I, I know it sounds bad, but I'm, I love her, but I don't have the same relationship with her that it sounds like you have with your mom. Like, I've given her advice. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right. I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's almost like a sister kind right, of relationship. Right. Yeah. You know? Mm hmm. I know what you mean, actually. I think I felt that with my old man. Yeah? Yeah. Like, I obviously, he's my, he's my dad, for sure. But he was definitely, like, when I think about the relationship of what it was, it was almost like a brother relationship. Hmm. Like an older... He was like my older brother, almost, in a way. Yeah. If I had to, like, relate it to that. Yeah. 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 It's, it's different, for sure. And then with my dad, I mean, I only talk to him every few months, kind of thing. You and then it's unpleasant. Yeah. And it's unpleasant. No, and then it's like just pleasant, I guess. Right. Yeah. Do you speak Spanish to your dad? Spanglish. Spanglish, really? <laughs> yeah. Fuck, that's awesome. I wish I spoke Spanglish. <laughs> you said you were going to take lessons. Are you still thinking about doing that? <sighs> I don't know, dude. I need a book like a Spanish role to really take that thing seriously, I think. Mm. You know what I mean? Fair. Like I need to like book like a Pablo Escobar role or something. I just speak Spanish. That class yeah. is Pablo Escobar. Pablo Escobar. <laughs> yeah, dude. Fuck. I see it now. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> um, you got any plans this summer? What's going on? You going anywhere? Um, we talked last time about maybe chasing summer. Oh yeah, we're doing that, right? Yeah. Are you not doing that anymore? I'm seventy percent going. Yeah, just like that, one week goes by and we drop thirty percent. What happened? No, I was always seventy percent. Oh okay. Yeah. Okay, we should definitely do it, man. Yeah, I probably will. <laughs> we should, I, we should mm-hmm. definitely, we should definitely do something this summer. Something, something of something, right? Yeah. It'd be nice to do a festival. I have a commercial that might renew, mm-hmm. uh, and my buddy Andrew's in it as well. You know, Andrew. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, if that commercial bo- re like renews, we're going to go to Mexico together. Fuck yeah. Dope. I think Mexico with him would be a wild time. Yeah. He's fucking out there, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. That would be great. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's important to do a vacation every once in a while. Yeah. You know, like every four or five months, get out of here for just a week. Yeah. It would be nice to do an all-inclusive, actually, and not have to worry about anything because sometimes going on a trip can be work, like planning everything. <laughs> and it's like more expensive than you thought. Like, yeah. you don't want. You want to have like a set price. You know you're paying totally. that. And, like, okay, I can afford that and just do that. Don't you get tired of like pulling your wallet out for everything when you're yeah, traveling yeah so it's nice to not have that and just be like i already paid for this shit i can just enjoy now yeah yeah i do like all inclusives it's easy when yeah. you're when i was when i was living in edmonton and i didn't have as much excitement in my day-to-day life what do you mean then excitement? i won't well, like auditioning and new people and big city and all of that got it like working as a nurse coming home going yeah. to sleep, repeat i wanted to do more intense traveling Mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. So you're saying we're kind of like living the dream right now. So it's like last vacations needed. So it's like when I, I go, so when I go on vacation, I just want to chill and relax. I don't need to, I don't really have that big of a desire to go to Europe and like walk the whole day and explore the city and do museums and all of that. Not just, that there's anything wrong with that. No, I loved yeah. doing that, but yeah. and I'm just in a place in my life where when I travel, I just want to kind of turn off. Right. You know, cell phone gone. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, exactly. I'm in the same boat, man. Yeah. Yeah. And just sit by the pool and drink and read and have fun. Imagine the government or someone rewarded you for following your dreams. Wouldn't that be fucking great? <laughs> like the government's like, you know what? I really love you going for your dreams. Um, you're going to get a Hawaii trip or a Mexico trip every three months. It's on us. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? There is a... Ah, fuck, man. They should do that. Do you know what a living wage is? No. We're reading about this. It's... Um, it's like a proposed libertarian concept where instead of having social programs at all or paying taxes, everybody, because we're moving into an economy where labor isn't as 
valuable, like because everything's so automated. So the cost or the value of labor is so down that it's hard for people. You can't really live on minimum wage, right? Right. So paying everyone a, like a universal basic income. So like everybody gets, no matter what your social status is, everybody gets $18,000 a year. Right. And there's no social programs and you just decide what you want to do with that $18,000. Wow. That's crazy. And then people could, you know, be artists and yeah. follow their dreams yeah. and do more creative things. And, um, as we move into a society where things are more and more automated, mm-hmm. I, I remember it was, I think I, I heard about it on a podcast, of course, and they were talking about, um, this magazine article from the 1920s or thirties where they said in the future in like 20 in 2010, people are only going to work 15 hours a week because technology and machinery is going to make our lives so much easier, but it's definitely not what's happened. Right. Right. It's made it more complicated. Yeah. It's definitely more complicated. Right. Easier in some ways, more complicated in other ways. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah, totally. I got a question for you though. Mm -hmm. Would you rather Mm -hmm. make millions of dollars, millions of dollars as a YouTuber? Or your face, like you almost puked or as a actor. No. Or you make thousands of dollars as an actor, millions of dollars as a YouTuber, mm-hmm. thousands of dollars as a, as an actor. What are we talking? What are we talking? $10,000 a month versus $1 million a year. $10,000 a month is not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not a million dollars a year. Or it's not a million dollars though a year. I don't know. Maybe 10,000, $10,000 a month. Yeah. You, um, <laughs> what's up, Joey? <laughs> uh, come say hi. <laughs> All right. Um, what's going on? Surprise guest. <laughs> How do you do? <laughs> We're talking about you, bro. We're talking about, ask him the question. Yeah, yeah. Joey, real quick. Well, I already know his fucking answer. He's, he's, <laughs> a, he's an idiot. What question? If you, what would you rather do? Would you rather make a million dollars a year as a YouTuber or thousands of dollars a year as an actor? Um, what am I YouTubing about? Uh, it doesn't matter. It could be anything. How many thousands of dollars a year as an actor? $10,000 a month. <laughs> yeah, I'll choose that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that mil- was easy. Millions of dollars as a as a YouTuber though. Millions. No, ten thousand a month. Is that nice. Ten thousand a month is good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's good. Listen, it's good. <laughs> you ain't you ain't making millions. It's six figures. You could donate to charity. <laughs> there is a study, and apparently, um, your happiness levels only increase up to $75,000 a year. Really? Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? So once you make more than $75,000 a year, um, people aren't happier. Wow. So it's about meeting your basic needs, having a little bit of money for leisure, like having freedom to do what you want. Right. Basically. Right. And then besides that, it doesn't really matter. I could see that. Yeah. Then it's just upgrading shit, you know? Yeah. Like going from a Honda to a a Jeep yeah, (laughs) and then a Jeep to like a Cadillac or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. Mm -hmm. I think honestly, man. Yeah. I am actually in the same boat. I think Mm -hmm. that I would, um, definitely do the $10,000 a month thing as an actor. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. Cause that's sick. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Can you imagine making $10,000 a month right now? That'd be sweet. Yep. Right. (laughs) I used to. (laughs) Really? You used to make close to that? More. More than $10,000 a month? Yeah. What? Yeah. What were you doing? Blowjobs. No, I Just meant c- combined income when I was married. Oh, right, 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 right. In Edmonton, I was making like, we were making like uh, Damn, 20. Dude. Damn. <laughs> wow. You know, I've never had $20,000 in my bank account before. No. No, not once. <laughs> <laughs> That's soon. crazy. Well, we'll see. One day. One day. One day, hopefully <laughs> soon. That is crazy though, man. You left that for this. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Making it sound bad. No, good for you, man. I've done the same thing, though. Fuck that. Yeah. Yeah. See ya. What do you need, what do you need a lot of money for? You got a lot, you got a lot saved up or what? Um, I got it more saved. It's dwindling a little. <laughs> God, Jesus Christ. 
<laughs> You're hilarious. <laughs> well, whatever, man. You'll get you'll have a big payday soon here, I promise. Hopefully. Once you book once you book like one of these like decent commercials, it's kind of you're kind of smooth. Sailing. I hope so. I got a text from Elise today asking if I had any unavailable dates in the month. But your when agent, I saw your, well, that's your my agent, agent yeah. and I saw my phone, and I was like, oh, did I book some? Oh, okay. <laughs> I know what you mean, man. When I get an, when I get an email from my agent. <laughs> yeah. Okay. For sure. Like my, there must be like, if we're going by points here in the dopamine receptors, they got to be jumping up by at least 60. Hell yeah. Like for sure. Like when I see them, like, whoa, totally, yes. totally. She could be asking like, Hey, do you like black coffee? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. And when you, <laughs> yeah. When you see like the project, like when you get project that email, whatever, you're, yeah. like, oh, you're fuck like, yeah, yeah fuck yeah, baby. I got an email last week and it said the flash and I had had the audition the week before and I was like, <gasps> <laughs> you almost had a heart attack. Yeah. Totally. But it was, it was for a different yeah, role. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was still like, so I was stoked. like, ah, oh, no, this is still great. Yeah, totally. But man. definitely part of me was like, dude, when I booked, pretty excited. when I booked that thing on the flash and I got a phone call from my agent saying, Hey, and she was so good at this too. I fucking miss her. For this. <laughs> she was, she'd always do this. She'd be like this. Hey, I just want to let you know, um, you're booked. I was like, yes. <laughs> Fuck. That was such a good feeling. man. Yeah. Ugh. What did you do? Do you remember? Oh, it was just a couple lines on the flash. No, no, no. I meant to oh. celebrate. Oh, to celebrate. Um, I think I, I didn't really celebrate back then, man. I was just so focused and like, I wasn't, I didn't understand work hard balance. I didn't understand that mm-hmm. at all. You know what I mean? It was more so just like, I would, I want to go out for a real nice dinner or something. I don't know. Definitely, I want to do yeah. something. Well now, now that I know, I probably would have like commemorated went to, it went to Jamaica or something on <laughs> vacation. <laughs> something ridiculous. <laughs> Um, cool. Let's wrap this biatch up. Wrap it up. Um, Anna, plug your, plug your stuff. Lanagram, L A N N A underscore gram. She's just learning how to use Instagram. Follow me. (laughs) I have 13 posts. (laughs) Do you have 13 posts? (laughs) Yeah. Jesus Christ. (laughs) Um, yeah, guys, thanks for listening to the episode. Thanks, guys. Don't forget to check us out um, wherever you're listening to this right now. Don't forget to subscribe, rate us, or whatever you want to do. I mean, we care, but we we don't really care, do we? Well, I mean, it's nice it's to have nice, listeners. It's nice. It's nice to have listeners. A little community. Yeah, a little community is fucking right? sweet. Yeah, yeah, totally. Thanks for listening, guys, and have a great week. Yeah, and we'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.